So, I'm sitting here thinking, <clears throat> sitting in my bed, right? I'm reminded of the scripture when the people of Israel was being exiled out of Egypt, right? When God told Moses to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. There was so many plagues and <clears throat> diseases and all this stuff happened during that time. Then the, the people of Israel was exiled out of Egypt. Right? They get God promised them that they was going to get to the promised land, right? But they had to go through a wilderness, you know, period. During that time, a uh, short journey, they say, you know, scholars, some scholars say a few weeks, some scholars say a few months. But anyhow, the, whether it was a few weeks or a few months, these people turn a few weeks or a few month journey into 40 years, right? For many different reasons. One being, they was complaining. You know, they was complaining, right? Then a few times, they claimed, that, you know, they were like, yo, let us go back to Egypt. They was willing to go back to slavery. They was willing to go back to oppression. They was willing to go back to hard manual labor than go to the promised land, right? Because God promised them. It's reminded me of these times, right? People complaining. We want, we want the world to go back to where it used to be, man. I'm trying to get back to my regular life this time and third. And I'm, I'm sitting up here, I'm sitting up here thinking like, I don't want life to go back as usual. Praise God, I, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a, you know, good position. God is providing for me, just like those God was providing for those people, those, the children of Israel during that time. He was providing for them. You know, and they, they, they was not lacking anything. They just they had to get to the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey where the you know where the, the fruit was bigger than life. But they were scared. Another thing, around the time they found where the promised land was at, Moses sent some spies in the land, sent a few people in there. They went to go spy out the land, and the people realized. The, the people realized that the, uh, the there was giants in the land. There was there were there there was there was there was people greater than them in the land that they felt like they couldn't beat or take the war. But this is what God said. God said that that land was theirs. He said, "I'm gonna take you to the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey." I don't care. He God don't care who was in the land, how big they were, and that's how I see it. The, the politics of the world and all the stuff that's happened in the world, they, we, to be honest, we can't beat them. They, they control the military. They control the resources. They control the agriculture. They control all this. They control all this stuff. But they, they is not no comparison to our God. The same God that delivered those people out captivity can do it for us i am i am i am you know cheerful me personally i'm cheerful god is providing do i have everything that do i feel like i need no i'm sorry not that i need but want because i have everything i need do i have everything i want because it's the difference between a want and a need no but that's fine god will provide and he is providing i'm trying to get to the promised land and and I'm gonna take this journey. I'm not gonna complain. I'm not gonna murmur. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I don't want to go back to Egypt, meaning I don't want to go back to slavery. I don't want to go back to captivity. I don't want to go back to the old way of doing things. I want to get to the promised land. But guess what? Even when you get to the promised land, the fight is not over. You want to know why the fight ain't over? Because you got to fight the giants in the land. The land is occupied. But this is the thing. This is one thing about the promised land, right? God allowed them to build the land. Ooh, I'm taking y'all somewhere. God allowed them to build the land. God allowed them to fertilize the land, to sow seed in the land, to build everything up in that land. And it wasn't for them. It was for you. <laughs> so when I see all these people going around, oh, this is our this, that, and I ain't even gonna name the country, the country we living in. This is our, this, this. I'm laughing because you know what? God allowed them to build all this great stuff up to give it to us, the true people of God. Now, 
with all that being said, right? Where is your faith? Because this only can be obtained when you're in Christ. Hmm. It only could be obtained when you're in Christ. The kingdom is in him. The land flowing in milk and honey is only found in Christ. He is the key. He is the door. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. The only way through to God is through Christ. Only way to the kingdom is through Christ. Are you going to the kingdom? Do you want to go to the kingdom? Confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Then start to live your life by the fruits of his spirit. Right? Operating in true love and true faith. Keeping your eyes on him. You know, not getting engaged in the things of this world. Stand up for the stand for the stand up for the poor and oppressed. Love, love your enemies. You know, but there's a secret to love your enemies. You want to know that secret to love your enemies? Leave them to their mess. You want to know why? They're going to destroy themselves. Eventually. I leave. I leave. I leave look, here's the thing. When you leave your enemies to themselves, they're going to create other enemies, right? And those other enemies is going to do the job that you wanted to do. They're going to destroy them. So I leave the people that's against me and my kind to themselves because eventually they're going to consume themselves. And that is scripture. I'm, I can't, I'm not, I'm not, um, <clears throat> I don't remember the, the actual scripture, but I'm sure you can find it. They will consume themselves, meaning they're going to destroy themselves. So I let them be. And I'm not going to gloat over their calamity. I'm not going to gloat over their fall. I pray that they come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ just as much as you or anybody else. You understand? But, um, man, that's just a quick word sitting in my bed, man. You know what I mean? But I holler at y'all on the flip. It's your boy Reese Johnson. Oh.